All right, they sure have a lot of different names for these Chinese spool guns. Uh, this one's very similar to the one I purchased from Amazon for maybe $39. <clears throat> I definitely wouldn't pay more than 44 bucks for these Chinese spool guns. Um, the quality is pretty terrible, but they do work. Um, this is the second one I got from Amazon. The first one arrived uh, broken. I just wanted to make a quick video on how you set these up because they come with uh, you know just these four thin wires sticking out. You have the power for the motor and then you have the two orange ones which are for the trigger. Um, the trigger is very easy to set up because it literally plugs into your welder where the trigger for your regular MIG gun would would plug in. This is the Hobart 140 and usually when you are doing uh, wire feed from the unit itself the trigger is actually can't quite see it in there but it just plugs right in there so so that's pretty easy you're obviously just going to wire these it doesn't matter which one is which you're going to make an extension like this and you're going to plug them into where your trigger would usually uh, plug in now the power for the motor here um, is a little more tricky because it actually has to you have to disconnect the motor here that runs the spool here. You have to disconnect it and then rewire it so that uh, there's power coming out to this motor here. Um, and then for your shielding gas, it's actually very simple. Um, there, you have to get a nice long piece of thin hosing here, and obviously it goes all the way back in and through the unit and actually into the unit. I'm going to open the unit now and show you. Um, how that works is very simple. Last one there. Okay, so... So, this is how it's set up stock, obviously, your shielding gas screws in here and there is a little solenoid here that turns it on and off. So this, the way it's set up, would feed into your regular gun. So we want to switch this over to this hose here. So we just go ahead and pull that off. And I actually just leave it in here. Um, and here is my hose, right? So that's the hose from this gun, it's a nice long hose, goes all the way through. There's even a little hole for you to get it through from the other side. Um, and this guy pulls through. Hold on. So here I have my tube coming all the way from my spool gun into the front of the unit uh, with the uh, motor power wires. There's actually a hole in here that's already came with this Hobart 140 um, and you can see my tube from the spool gun is coming through there and also my uh, electric motor power wires right so these are the red and black wires from the spool gun running all the way into the unit 
um, but first, so then I just connect this guy on here instead of what was originally there. And here is where the power for the motor inside the Hobart uh, runs here. And I just put these quick connectors on here so that I could disconnect the motor that's in here. So you can see all I do is disconnect the spool that's inside the unit for when you're using your regular MIG gun and I have connected the motor power uh, to my spool gun uh, over here. So that is this red one and black one. Now these orange ones are the trigger wire, right? So when you pull here. And that one is very simple as well. It actually just plugs in where your regular gun would plug in. Let's see these two guys here. And this trigger literally plugs in where your trigger would usually plug in like that. It's a dark in there. Anyway, so that's it, right? So, because now I have my motor power, I have my trigger plugged in. So now when we pull this, the motor will spin. And we have the shielding gas. The other one is the other uh, um, big welding wire that again goes through here. and attaches. There's usually a little short cable that attaches this to so that just goes in there. So the spool that comes with these Chinese spool guns is I believe a metric sizing. Um, so none of the spools here in the U.S. are going to fit. But it does come with one of the metric spools, so it's actually pretty easy just to wind on um, your own wire. In my case, this is aluminum wire. Um, instead of doing a whole lot of modifications to get an American spool size to fit on here. Obviously, this just goes on here, and then I feed through... Um, a piece of the aluminum wire and these two little gears um, push it out right here and the shielding gas is going to be coming out right here. Um, one thing you are going to need is extra tips, right? Because it doesn't come with any extra tips. It comes with one and especially when you're trying to do aluminum welding and trying to figure it out, uh, you are going to burn through some tips. I actually suggest before you even get started, just go ahead and order, um, focus, order more of these. Um, I'll show you which ones they are. So it's important to know which um, nozzle tips these are. Um, it took me um, quite a long time. I thought at first they were going to be some weird Chinese size or something, but they are, these are actually, um, Hobart, uh, 186406 contact tips. Um, you can get, depending on your wire, you can get them in, uh, 035 or 030. They're M5 by 0.8 mil thread, so they are these metric ones. Um, I would definitely go ahead and buy those before you even try welding aluminum because I've gone through quite a few um, until I got it set up to where it stopped eating tips very quickly. So the, the, so the other problem I've run into is the motor inside the spool gun actually spins slow, slower than the motor inside the Hobart. So the motor inside here, which usually spins your spool when you're using a MIG gun and you're pressing it out, you know, pushing that wire out. This spins faster when it's connected up 
when you connect this up, the motor inside here spins slower. So there's a difference in the KV for each engine. So I found that this, the motor inside the Hobart at zero runs at 44 RPM, at 50% runs at 134, and 100% runs 198. Whereas when you have the Chinese spool gun hooked up at zero, you're running at 19 RPM is a big difference here. At 50%, you're running at 85 RPM, a big difference again. At 100%, you're running at 145 instead of 198. Um, so I found that makes a difference. I'm not getting quite enough speed out of this spool gun. Uh, the the speed control here uh, at zero is five volts, and at 100% is 25 volts. So um, the only way I'm going to get the Chinese spool gun to spool up a little faster is to install a buck converter, an up converter. So the voltage to the electric motor uh, will actually be running at a slightly higher voltage. Um, so that we can get this engine to spin at a, a more comparable speed to uh, the way the Hobart's uh, electric motor spins when you are using the regular MIG gun. So here are the buck converters that I'm going to, well I'm just going to use one of these. <clears throat> you can get them on eBay, it's very easy to get a buck down converter which will lower the voltage of a source, but we need an up converter. So. This is a step up power converter. Uh, they should be pretty cheap. Uh, let's just see who this seller was. Yes. Uh, anyway, so I already so it arrived and I've already tested it. Uh, I just put 12 volts into the input and then uh, I was measuring the output. So this should be sufficient to, instead of uh, running from. 5 volts to 25 volts, we're going to run something like 10 volts to 35 volts. So that should be enough voltage to speed up the motor inside the spool gun to something a little, uh, quite a bit closer, if not faster, than uh, the speed at which the internal engine for the uh, MIG gun um, spins. Uh, so. I'm literally just going to install this. You know, you have your two power wires here, and you want it somewhere close because you can adjust that voltage on this little pin right here. Um, so this is literally just going to be installed here, and I'll be able to adjust the voltage and then obviously uh, speed up the gun a bit. Okay, so this little butt buck up converter works. Um, so it's got this little adjustment knob here. Um, it was up converting all the way to 35 volts from a max of 25 volts, which is a little bit too much. But I've now got this adjusted where at the 50% dial on the Hobart, it's running at 134 RPM like it should, whereas before it was running at 85 RPM. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, there's more measurements, I mean, there's more adjustments I can make, but I can easily attain this uh, 198-200 RPM at 100% now, uh, which is right where I want um, the Hobart to be running, uh, where I want the spool gun to be um, running. I want the same RPM as the internal uh, spool for the MIG gun was running. So these little guys seem to work. We'll see how long they last. I mean, it's, a, it's supposed to be a 10 amp current. I can't imagine that drawing, you know, much more than 10 amps. Uh, anyways, so let's see. Let's see now. Obviously, this is what I'm using for uh, RPM testing. Uh, you are, I can't do this, but you hold down. I have a little reflector plate on there and I can see uh, what RPMs I'm getting. 